والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الصادق الأمين وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Indeed all praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creator, the sustainer and controller of all that happens in the universe and we invoke his peace and blessings upon his noble messenger the truthful, the trustworthy one his family, his companions and all those who follow them in righteousness until the end of time my dear brothers and sisters in Islam assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh on Monday we started talking about the story of Isa alayhi salam but as I mentioned then to truly understand his his life and the truth about him we also need to look at his own mother Maryam alayhi salam because in, in his, the story of his mother and in his own story alayhi salam Isa alayhi salam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught mankind some important lessons <coughs> In the case of his mother, perhaps one of the greatest and most important lessons that Allah has taught mankind is that women are equal to men when it comes to serving and worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No gender is better or superior or naturally at an advantage in terms of serving God Almighty. And as I mentioned, if you look at the story of Maryam and how she was born and the dua, the prayer that her mother made, we will see that her mom did not think that a girl could really and truly serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah informs us that that's not the case. And as we will, as we will see, this, this girl would play an extremely important role in one of the greatest miracles that Allah Himself, God Almighty Himself would perform to show mankind that He has power over all things. So we know that Maryam alayhi salam grew up not as the average young person in those days, but she was quite different in that she grew up in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so she grew up attached to Allah and worship of Allah. To the point where, as I mentioned, a statement that she made regarding an incident that occurred in her life would prompt a messenger of Allah, Zakaria alayhi salam. And although he's a messenger of Allah, and obviously he's conscious, and he knows more about Allah than any, everyone else at that time. Yet it took certain words from Maryam alayhi salam, brothers and sisters to sort of ring a bell in his mind or as we might say to sort of waken him to wake him up and as a result of these words he would pray to Allah and ask him for a son even though he thought at the time it's highly unlikely he could have a son because he was already old he had progressed in age to the point where he had become old and his wife had passed the age where she could bear children Yet, the words of Maryam alayhi salam, the words of a woman or a girl, so to speak, is what prompted him, despite what he saw as barriers to him having a son, to still pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah would grant him that son. He says, قَالَ رَبِّ إِنِّي وَهَنَ الْعَظْمُ مِنِّي He says, my bones have become weak and old, brittle. And my hair, my head or my hair has become what? Shayba, full of grain. And my wife has reached the stage or passed the stage where she can have children. Yet he says, So bless me, O Lord, grant me from you that is through your blessings and your power and your might, a wali, an inheritor. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would give him the good news of a son, Yahya. This was as a result of the words of Maryam alayhi salam when he found food with her, or in particular fruits that were sort of out of season, out of season fruits. 
he would fight with her. And so this is what, what he found strange. And so she grew up in, in this sort of atmosphere of connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, avoiding the what might be considered you know, a normal upbringing in those days. And all of this was to perform, as I mentioned, one of the greatest miracles that mankind would witness. A miracle that would teach mankind that Allah has power over all things. And that although Allah has ordained and decreed certain laws, in certain rules, that govern how existence unfolds. We call them the laws of nature. What we call the laws of nature, brothers and sisters, and you know, all the ideas that Einstein came up with in terms of how the universe operates and how it works, all of these are rules or decrees decreed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so although Allah has decreed these rules or these laws that govern existence and how life unfolds, in this miracle, Allah the Exalted shows mankind that He has the power to intervene in these laws. He has the power, as we might say, to break the laws or to break the rules. That the rules apply to you and I, but to God Almighty, the rules do not apply in the sense that He has power over all things. And so Allah would create a human being. The norm that you and I know of is that you need something from the male and female in order to create a baby, to make a baby. The male and female these days need not come together. Alright, person can be thousands of miles away. But nevertheless, to, to make a baby, you need something from the male and the female. And a person would consider it and deem it impossible, impossible, not even highly improbable, but just impossible, that a woman could bear a child, can become pregnant, without anything from the male. Not just contact, but anything from the male. And yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala using Maryam alayhi salam would, would prove this to mankind that he has power over all things. That he can intervene in what you and I consider the laws of nature. And he can make the impossible happen. So Maryam grew up in this atmosphere of piety, of righteousness. And all of this was to sort of ensure that people understand the magnitude of this miracle. See, if she was somebody of loose character, brothers and sisters, then the people would not find it that difficult that she is pregnant. If someone of, of loose character, it would not be hard to, to imagine or to assume that the person committed some sinful act that resulted in the pregnancy. But in this case, Maryam alayhi salam was someone who was known within the community at that time as a righteous and upright woman. Not only that, she's coming from a family of righteous and upright people. But we'll talk about these details as the story progresses. So she grows up and she reaches that age when Allah the Exalted decides that it is time for this miracle to happen. It is time he shows mankind that he has power over all things. And so while she is in her room, that is described in fact in the Quran, Allah tells us that as, as she grew and got older, and it came near to the time when Allah wanted Jesus alayhi salam to be created, she even secluded herself from her family. So she reduced the interaction she would have even with her own family. And while in this state, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends the angel Jibra'il alayhi salam to her to give her this good news. So she didn't just, you know, wake up one day and realize she was pregnant, you know. She was actually informed of this by the angel. 
But when the angel came, as Allah tells us in Surah Maryam, and Surah Maryam, brothers and sisters, and Surah Ali Imran, these are the two chapters, the two surahs in which most of the details of the miracle of the birth and the life of Isa alayhi salam are mentioned. So I recommend strongly that you go back to Surah Maryam. The first part of Surah Maryam deals with the, the story of Zakaria alayhi salam. How he prayed for a son and how Allah granted him the son. And then immediately after that, the story switches to that of Maryam alayhi salam and the child she would bear, one of the greatest, greatest messengers of Allah. In Surah Ali Imran though, Allah informs us that the dua of Zakaria was a result of certain words that Maryam said. So I recommend also that you read the story in Surah Ali Imran uh, towards the beginning of the surah because it has some details that if we were to read both surahs, then you have inshallah a clearer picture of the story. But in Surah Maryam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that He sent the angel Jibra'il alayhi salam who appeared to Maryam alayhi salam in the form of a human being in all respects. فَتَمَثَّلَ لَهَا بَشَرًا سَوِيًّا Sawiyan here means in all respects, meaning what Maryam alayhi salam saw and to her, to the best of her knowledge, he was a human being. She had no clue this was not a human being. And immediately when she saw this man in her room, remember she's a pious and righteous woman. So a, an unknown man in her room is a major problem. It's a major headache for her. If it were Zakaria alayhi salam, of course she, she knows him. And he's the one who was entrusted. وَكَفَّلَهَا Zakaria. Allah placed him uh, in, 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 as the guardian of Maryam. But this was a strange person, a strange man. So her very initial reaction as soon as she saw this man was is a reflection of the high level of piety and righteousness this lady had achieved, brothers and sisters. Remember, the issue here is the lesson that a woman, a lady, is as capable of serving Allah as a man. She is not disadvantaged. She is not disadvantaged. So her initial reaction was, Allah says, قَالَتْ إِنِّي أَعُوذُ بِالرَّحْمَانِ مِنْكَ إِنْ كُنْتَ تَقِيًّا she didn't even say, what are you doing here? How did you get here? How did you get into this room? It's locked, you know? Who are you? She said, I seek refuge in the beneficent Lord. Inni a'udhu bir rahmani minka. I seek refuge in the beneficent Lord. From you, in kunta taqiyya. If you fear Allah. That was her initial reaction. I seek refuge with the beneficent Lord. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from you, if you indeed fear Allah. And the angel responds by saying to her, قَالَ إِنِّي قَالَ إِنَّمَا أَنَا رَسُولُ رَبِّكْ He says, I'm nothing more than a messenger of your Lord, or from your Lord. And why am I here? He says, لِأَهَبَ لَكِ غُلَامًا زَكِيًّا to, to bestow upon you or to give you the good news of a son, a purified son, Ulam and Zaki. In Maryam alayhi salam, when she heard this, right away she said, Hey, how can I ever have a son? She said, My Lord, how is it possible that I can have a child, a son? While, literally translated, no man has touched me. So she had no relationship period with any male. Not a boyfriend, not an engagement. Because if you're engaged, again, I mean, it's, it's, it's more likely that a person can understand that how this could happen. But this hasn't happened. وَلَمْ أَكُوْ بَغِيَّ Nor was I of loose character. The word bari means someone who is, as we say, sexually permissive. He said, I'm not like this. But through the angel, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs her, قَالَ كَذَلِكِ قَالَ رَبُّكَ This 
this is what your Lord has said or decreed. It is easy for me. It is easy for Allah. It's impossible for you and I, brothers and sisters. It's impossible for you and I that a woman who has absolutely zero contact with any male, period, can become pregnant. But Allah tells her, Huwa alayya hayyin. It is easy for me. And then Allah informs her, وَلِنَجَعَلَهُ آيَةً لِلنَّاسِ And we shall make him, that is this son, a sign for people. An ayah, a sign, a miracle for people. And so indeed in the birth and in the life, brothers and sisters, of Isa alayhi salam, there are many miracles, signs for people, ayat. In any case, the angel tells her that Allah says, وَكَانَ أَمْرًا مَقْضِيًّا It is a matter that has already been decreed. That's it, you have no choice in the matter for sin. Because Allah does whatever He wills. It is Allah's will that will always be established in the land. Or it is Allah's will that will always be established in existence. Not our will. If our will coincides with the will of Allah, then yes, it will occur. It will happen. We have to understand in the bigger picture, it is God who is in control of His universe. Not you and I. He has given us some control. But even that control is still within His control. So we're not outside of the control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our control is within the control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is like a supervisor who is given certain powers by, by the CEO or the, 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 the owner of a company. You have some control. There, sometimes there is even some amount of, 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 of uh, cash transactions that you can engage in. But that doesn't mean you're beyond the oversight of your, your higher boss. So we do have some control. And we do have a will and desire, but we are not outside or beyond the control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah informs her that this is a matter that has already been decreed. Allah wants to do it and intends to do it to show mankind he has power over all things. So she became pregnant. And that's a miracle. And so as Muslims, we believe without any confusion or doubts about the miraculous conception All right, Christians call it a virgin birth. The miraculous conception of Isa alayhi salam. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also made it clear that Jesus is not his child or his son. <coughs> In Surah Ali Imran, that's why I recommend you read both surahs, because there are certain details in one that you don't find in the other. When the angel told her, That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, look, you know, this is easy for him. Allah also told the angel to tell her that Allah yakhluqu ma yasha. That Allah creates what he wills. Now this word create is interesting. Because just before in the story of Zakaria alayhi salam, when he prayed for a son, and when Allah told him he was going to have a son, and he said, oh Lord, how can I have a son? I'm old. I'm very old now, my wife is past the age of bearing children. In that case, Allah says to Zakaria alayhi salam, Allaha yaf'alu ma yasha, that Allah does what He wills. Yaf'al. But here in the case of Isa alayhi salam and Maryam alayhi salam, Allah tells her, Allaha yakhluqu ma yasha, He creates whatever He wills. So yaf'alu munak, Over there with Zakaria, it does. And here Allah says, يخلق, creates what He wills. Which is an indication, brothers and sisters, that Isa alayhi salam is a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and therefore not the son of Allah, not the son of God. Period. He is a creature created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this miraculous manner that He was, he, he was brought into existence without ever having a father. Allah says, He يَخْلُقُ مَا يَشَاءُ in this case. And so she became pregnant and inshallah uh, next week when we continue, when we meet again, 
we will continue with uh, the, the story and how it happened. Because we want to talk about the life of Isa alayhi salam. So that as Muslims, we understand the reality and the truth about this great man, this great messenger of Allah, and the place he occupies in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is no ordinary person, but at the same time, he was a human being in all respects. He had no defined qualities. He was not part God or the son of God. He was a human being in all respects, but he achieved greatness, of course, through the blessing and the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But nevertheless, he was a human being. And you see, this is what makes him a great person. This is what makes any messenger of Allah a great man. It's not that they got divine qualities after they became a prophet. No, that they were still full human beings, but they were able to live at a level that is really high. Their standard of character was very high. This is what makes them great human beings. That they had to face all the challenges you and I face. And yet they were able to perform at that high level. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us. May He open up our hearts and minds so that we can understand this wonderful message He has revealed from mankind. And may He inspire all of us to live by this message. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala show us the truth is the truth. And help us to follow that. And may he show us the wrong is wrong and help us to avoid that. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahi wa rahmani wa rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala khatam al anbiya'i wa mursaleen. Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi. والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد surely all praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa taala the creator the sustainer and the controller of all that happens in the universe and we invoke his peace and blessings upon his noble messenger his family his companions and all those who follow them in righteousness until the end of time. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Today and tomorrow, perhaps Wednesday, are shaping up to be cold days, just like we had uh, a few weeks ago. But nevertheless, as Allah has uh, told us in the Quran, it will not last forever, it will end. Allah says, فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرًا إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرًا Surely with difficulty will come ease. Surely with difficulty there will be ease. So these fluctuations are important to help us to appreciate the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> so when we are very cold, we can appreciate the warmth we have. We can appreciate our ability to buy clothing that will keep us warm and safe. And of course, when we're very hot and we have the ability to cool down, we can appreciate the blessings that we have. But in order to continue with our discussion on the life of Isa alayhi salam, we have already, uh, we've gotten to the point actually where his mother, Maryam alayhi salam, had this discussion, if you like, or this dialogue with the angel when he was sent to inform her that she will have a son. <clears throat> and as we mentioned then, she was quite surprised and she, she said, look, this is not possible. How can I have a son? When no male has come into contact with me, walam aku and nor am I one of loose character. <clears throat> but as we saw, the angel informed her that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> says that he creates whatever he wills. And in any case, Allah says, وَكَانَ أَمْرًا مَقْضِيًّا It has been an amara that has already been decreed. Allah has already decided that he, he will do this. Why? To show mankind that he has power over all things. That he has power over all things. And so she became pregnant. 
and as a result she would seclude herself even further from even her family and eventually she will give birth to this child and after a few days or perhaps a few weeks she decided to come back now to meet her family meet the people because she could not stay in seclusion forever but Allah the exalted knew all of this and you know what's amazing brothers and sisters is that the, the, the life of Isa alayhi salam it started with a miracle and throughout his life there are miracles and at the very end when the people plotted to kill him Allah the exalted saved him in, the, in, the, in a miraculous way it's amazing that his life started <clears throat> and it didn't really we can't say it, it ended but towards the end when the people plotted to kill him he was saved in the most miraculous way it's an amazing life Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of course knew the reaction of people to see someone who presented as a righteous and pious person in particular a lady who presented all the time as a righteous and pious lady he knew how the people would react when they find her with a child and here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again would cause a miracle to be performed by none other than Jesus himself alayhi salam but this time as a little baby in fact even before that when she was in labor pains giving birth to Isa and after she gave birth to him because she had secluded herself she did not have food and water as Allah tells us in the Quran he provided that for her and Isa alayhi salam from below her this little baby spoke to her. Some of us even say it's the angel. <clears throat> some say it's the angel who spoke to her. Some say it is Isa himself, the baby who spoke to her and told her, La tahzani. Don't grieve. Don't worry. Nearby there was a date uh, palm tree. And he told her, Shake this tree. <laughs> that fresh dates would fall down to you so eat and drink and be happy be comfortable then Allah instructs her through the angel here are the instructions to her in relation to how she will deal with the people the community when she comes to them with a child <clears throat> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not tell her what arguments to use instead Allah tells, tells her if you come in, if you run into any human being or when you come to any human being Tell them, Inni nadartu lirrahmani sawma. Tell them that you have dedicated a fast to the beneficent one. And this fast is, Falan ukallima liyawma insiyya. The fast is, I will not speak. I will not speak to any human being. Interesting. She's a lady who presented as a pious and righteous lady from, you know, at, 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 from a young age. Then she has a child and she's never married, never even engaged. And yet Allah does not tell her what arguments to use with her people. He tells her, you be quiet. Subhanallah. How then will Allah clear her name? Look at the miracle that is going to happen here. So she comes out to the people. And subhanallah, the first thing the people said to her, they said to her, O Maryam, you have come or you have done a horrible thing. Ma kana abuki 
And this horrible thing is, you have a child, while your father, your father was not an indecent man. He was not a lewd man, and a womanizer. He wasn't like that. Nor, were you, nor was your mother someone of loose character. At this point, remember Allah told her, you don't speak. Because no matter how much she tries to tell the people what really happened, they wouldn't listen to her. They would not hear her. So to defend her name and her honor, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused a miracle to unfold at this time. So she pointed to the baby. This is the instructions he was given. You don't speak to any human being. All you do is you point to the child. And the people, of course, reacted as any people would react. They saw a child. They said, They said to her, How can we talk with and communicate with a child who is in the cradle? An infant. And this is when the miracle unfolded. That, that child, that infant, Isa alayhi salam, he spoke. And not just babbling, as we say, in baby language, but he spoke the language that the people could understand. It's one thing to make baby sounds. It's another to speak uh, a co cohesive and understandable language. He said, Qala inni Abdullah. The first thing that comes out of his mouth is, he said, I am the servant or the slave of Allah. And in this again, there is the implication, brothers and sisters, that Isa alayhi salam was not the son of God, but a servant of God, a creation of God. Now the people are supposed to realize that normally babies don't speak. And so if this baby could speak, then they should be able to accept that it is therefore possible that he could be born without his mother ever having a, a contact with any male person. See, that seemed impossible to them. So Allah showed them another miracle so that they should realize, <clears throat> they should realize that look, the impossible is happening in, our, in front of our own eyes and we can hear him speak with our ears. The impossible is unfolding in front of them. It should have made them realize that the claim of, the, of, of, of his mother, that she did not have any contact with any male, yet she has a baby, it should have made them realize that this is a miracle. And so the birth of Isa alayhi salam into this world is in itself a miracle. And he spoke, he told them, and qala inni Abdullah. And he said some other things. al He will give me the scripture. <coughs> So as a baby, he was not commissioned as a messenger. He only spoke a few words as a miracle to clear the good name of his mother. Allah protected her good name and cleared it in the most miraculous fashion. He caused the baby to speak. And that, of course, is miraculous because that is beyond what is normal. Qala inni Abdullah. He said, I am the servant of Allah. Atani al kitab. He will give me the scripture later on when he's commissioned as a prophet. Waja'alani nabiyya. And he will make me a prophet. Waja'alani mubarakan aynama kunt. And he will, he will make me a, a blessing wherever I be. Isa alayhi salam. No ordinary messenger. A great messenger of Allah. That wherever he, he will be, he will be a source of blessing for those around him. وَأَوْصَانِي بِالصَّلَاةِ وَالزَّكَاةِ مَا دُمْتُ حَيَّةً And he has ordered me to pray and to pay the zakat as long as I'm alive. وَبَرَّمْ بِوَالِدَتِي And that I should be kind to my mother. <clears throat> when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Maryam at the beginning talks about the story of Yahya and Zakaria alayhim as -salam, <clears throat> When he describes that a Yahya alayhi salam, he said, وَبَرَّمْ بِوَالِدَيْهِ 
and someone who is kind to his parents, plural, or dual, mother and father. But here, Isa alayhi salam said, وَبَرَّمْ بِوَالِدَتِي And that I would be kind and respectful to my mother. <clears throat> and this is one of the things that the Qur'an is very consistent on. That consistently, the Qur'an makes it clear that Isa alayhi salam did not have a human father. And that God was not his father either. He didn't have a human father, but he was still a human being created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so here, he says that Allah has also ordered me to be kind and respectful to my mother. And then of course, as a baby, he didn't speak anymore. So he grew up as a normal baby, would not speaking and then learning uh, as the months went by the language of, that he heard around him. And then finally, when he was a young man and Allah decided it was time to commission him, he was commissioned as a messenger of Allah and the prophet of Allah. And during the time that he was a messenger, he performed many miracles. He performed many miracles and some of these are mentioned in the Quran he, he made out of a clay a model of a bird <clears throat> and then he simply blew on this clay model of this bird and that clay model that statue if you like became a live bird and flew away if <laughs> In Surah Al-Ma'idah, towards the end, at the very end of Surah Al-Ma'idah, there are a number of verses in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the scene that will unfold on the Day of Judgment and the dialogue he's going to have with Isa alayhi salam. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remind him of his many favors, his many favors that he bestowed upon him and his mother. And Allah will remind him, if takhluqu min teen, remember, when you used to make from clay the model of a bird, fi, and then you blew on it, and it became or it becomes a bird by the will of Allah. And you were also able to cure blindness and people who were suffering from leprosy. With the permission of Allah. Not by yourself, not with your power. With the permission of Allah. So throughout his life he performed all these miracles. And consistently in his life he also ordered his people to worship Allah alone. For Allah, he told them, Inna Allah Rabbi wa Rabbukum. Surely Allah is my Lord and your Lord. Fa'abudu. Hada siratun mustaqeem. This is what the Quran says. Isa alayhi salam told his people, Surely Allah is my Lord and your Lord. Fa'abudu. So serve him and worship him. That is the straight way. هَذَا صِرَاتُ مُسْتَقِيمٌ That is the straight way. And so the Qur'an makes it clear that Isa alayhi salam himself never claimed to be son of God, to be part God, to be God, or to have any divine qualities or attributes. In fact, in the verses I told you about at the end of Surah Al-Ma'idah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to him, to Isa on the Day of Judgment, Ya Isa, a'anta qulta linnas ittakhiduni wa ummiya ilahayni min duni Allah? Subhanallah. This is the claim that people make. That Jesus claimed he was God. He said he was God. So Allah will ask him, O Isa, O Jesus, are you the one who told people to take me and my mother as gods besides Allah? Listen to his answer, brothers and sisters. That is in the Quran. <laughs> Isa alayhi salam will say, 
to Allah in reply in response to this question ma yakunu li an aqula ma laysa li bihaq he will say to Allah lord i have no right to say that which i have no right to say i have no authority it is not befitting of me to say anything that i have no right to say no authority to say and the implication is i am not god Therefore, I have no, it, is, it, is, it does not befit me to say that I'm God or ask people to worship me. I have no right to say that because I'm not God. He says, I have, it is not befitting of me. It is not fitting for me to say that which I don't have a right to say. If I indeed said that, you know it, O oh Lord. You know it. You know what is in myself, my thoughts, my ideas. And I do not know what is in yours. You indeed you are the knower of the unseen. The secrets that are unseen. Allah is the knower of that. Then he will also say, Ma lahum illa ma amartani bih. I did not say to them, O oh Lord, except what you ordered me to say to them. What is that? What is it that Allah ordered him to say to the people? An ya'budu Allah rabbi wa rabbakum. This is what Allah told him. And this is what he will say. I did not say, O oh Lord, to the people, except what you ordered me to say to them. That you should worship Allah alone, my Lord and your Lord. And I was a witness over them as long, I, as long as I was with them. But when you raised me up, you were the one who was watching over them. So he has no knowledge of what transpired after he was raised up. And the, the, the false claims and accusations that were leveled against him alayhi salam after he was raised up because while he was alive the people did not believe he was God or part God or the son of God this claim would come about after he was raised up from the midst of the people so he will say to Allah when I was among them I was a witness to, to, uh, over them to what they said and how they used to live and behave but once you raised me up, Kunta anta raqiba alayhim. You were the one who was present and you know best what they were saying or what they said at that time. So this is the life of this great Prophet and Messenger of Allah. Insha'Allah next time we will talk a little bit about this end. When the people plotted to kill him, what really happened? Because this is also a very important aspect of his life that we Muslims need to be clear on at the very least from the Quran's perspective <clears throat> so as Muslims we need, we need to know what we ought to know and believe about Isa alayhi salam this should be very clear in our minds so inshallah we'll continue with that the next time we meet may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us and may he open up our hearts and minds so that we can understand this wonderful message he has revealed from mankind in the Quran and may he inspire all of us to live by this message. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala show us the truth as the truth and help us to follow that. And may he show us falsehood as falsehood and help us to avoid that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cause us to be among those who love and rever all his messengers, all his great prophets and messengers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us from on the straight path. May he forgive also for us our mistakes. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullaha li wa lakum. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الصادق الأمين وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد Indeed our praises belong to Allah سبحانه وتعالى the creator, the sustainer and the controller of all that happens in the universe and we invoke his peace and blessings upon his noble messenger, the truthful, the trustworthy one, his family, his companions, 
and all those who follow them in righteousness until the end of time. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I know the past two days have been very cold. And maybe we have to endure some more cool days, but inshallah it will get better. Uh, nevertheless, we will continue with our discussion on the life of Isa alayhi salam, exploring the Islamic perspective of certain aspects of the life of this great messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we talked about his birth, we talked about his mother's birth, his own birth, and the number of miracles that unfolded while he was alive. And finally, after years of preaching to his people and inviting them back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, some of the people at his, uh, of his time decided to kill him. And of course, this is one of the areas or one of the aspects in which the Muslim's perspective differ completely with the Christian's perspective. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in two ayats in Surah An-Nisa, two verses in Surah An-Nisa addresses this issue of Isa alayhi salam, his prophet and messenger, whether he was killed and whether or not he was crucified. Here is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. And in this ayah, verse 157 of Surah Al-Nisa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the claim that the people of his time made, those who were trying to kill him, they, a claim they made. Allah says, وَبِقَوْلِهِمْ إِنَّا قَتَلْنَا الْمَسِيحَ عِيسَى إِبْنَ مَرْيَمْ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Allah says, and they're saying in boast, وَبِقَوْلِهِمْ And they're saying in boast, إِنَّا قَتَلْنَا الْمَسِيحَ Surely, and they used emphasis, surely we killed the Messiah. And just in case there were two people who were known as the Messiah, they said, Isa. And just in case there are two people who are the Messiah, who are Messiahs plus their name is Isa, they said, Ibn Maryam, the son of Maryam. And just in case, despite how highly improbable it might be that two people they have the same first name and their mother's name are the same and they don't have fathers they said Rasulullah the people they wanted others to know that they had killed this man Jesus this man who claimed to be the messenger of Allah so they said وَبِقَوْلِهِمْ as Allah says وَبِقَوْلِهِمْ إِنَّا قَتَلْنَا الْمَسِيحَ عِيسَى بِنَ مَرْيَمَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ and they're saying in boast, surely we killed or we have killed the Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, the messenger of Allah. So no one can dispute exactly who is this person who was killed. But what is interesting here as a side note, brothers and sisters, is that the people of his time did not consider him the son of God. Notice they said he is messenger of Allah, Rasul Allah. He claimed to be the messenger of Allah. So in his time, while he was alive, alayhi salam, no one claimed that he was the son of God, or that he was God, or part God, or he had divine qualities. This claim would come about later. It would come about later. As a, and as some comparative scholars, scholars of comparative religion have mentioned, among them, Sheikh Ahmad Didat, may Allah have mercy on him, there is no statement even in the Bible that in itself has been tampered with but we can still take it in its form as it is today even after it was tampered with they say that there is no verse no statement in which Jesus alayhi salam ever said I am God worship me there are other people who attribute this to him so others might say of him that he is God and worship him, but he himself, the words that I am God worship me, 
or I am the Son of God does not exist. Even in the Bible that is tampered with. But it is interesting even uh, in his life, the people considered him not the Son of God, but based on his claims at least, the Messenger of Allah. And that's why they mentioned it here. Surely we have killed the Messiah, Jesus, the Son of Maryam, the Messenger of Allah. This is their claim. Here is what Allah says in reply to this, in refuting this claim. وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ And they did not kill him, nor did they crucify him. So he was never, Isa alayhi salam was never ever captured and nailed on the cross. And as a result, dying from that. The Quran is clear. Allah says, وَإِنَّ الَّذِينَ اخْتَلَفُوا فِيهِ لَفِي شَكٍ مِّنْ And those who differ about what actually happened, they themselves are in doubt about what happened because they have no clear evidence to prove one way or, the no or another. So they're just guessing. مَا لَهُمْ بِهِ مِنْ عِلْمٍ إِلَّا اتِّبَاعَ الظَّنِّ They do not have sure knowledge. All they do is they guess. They make assumptions. You see, brothers and sisters, the assumption is, the human assumption is, if a number of people were in this masjid, and the security forces were to come in and surround this building, and some of them were to come in, the human assumption is it's highly unlikely the person who they're looking for who is in the building, it's highly unlikely he can escape. Highly unlikely he can escape. So the assumption is he had to be captured. But Allah says that the people who differ about this, they're just dealing with with dhan, with guesswork, with assumptions. Ma lahu bihi min ilm. They don't have no sure knowledge, except ittiba ad except that they're following conjecture or guessing, assumptions. And then Allah ends this ayah, this is verse 157. And surely, yaqeenan, of a surety, they did not kill him. Now, when the Muslim says this to a Christian, the Christian will have certain objections. First of all, they will say, listen, it's impossible. I mean, how is it possible that he could escape when the security forces had come and surrounded the, the building and, and, and you know they entered the building? <laughs> how is it possible that he escaped? But you see, for, for, for the Muslim brothers and sisters, for us, the answer is very simple and straightforward. Look at it. His birth is miraculous. Alayhi salam. He spoke as a little infant to clear the name of his mother. That's another miracle. Then in his life as a messenger, in preaching to people, he performed a number of miracles. And finally at the end, when the people plotted to kill him, Allah the Exalted, the Creator, he saved his messenger in a miraculous manner also. It's amazing that his whole life, you know, the beginning, his birth, started with a miracle and his whole life is full of miracles and right at the end when the people try to kill him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save him and rescue him in a miraculous manner so the first objection a Christian person will have is okay first of all it's not possible our answer to that is look Allah has power over all things what's your problem if you believe that God could create Jesus without a, a human father, period, then why is it difficult for you to believe that God Almighty has the power to, to remove him from the midst of the people? It shouldn't be difficult to accept that. Now the other argument they will raise is the Quran says, وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ they did not kill him, they did not crucify him, but it was made to appear to them that they did. 
So the Christian will ask you and I, well, what happened then? If you guys are claiming that Jesus was never captured and crucified on the cross, what happened then? Now, the people who came to capture Isa alayhi salam, based on the historical, historical accounts, they did capture somebody. And that somebody definitely looked very much like Isa alayhi salam. Because these people, from their perspective, they believe 100% that they had captured Jesus alayhi salam. That's why they said, as Allah says, وَبِقَوْلِهِمْ إِنَّا قَتَلْنَا الْمَسِيحَ عِيسَى بِنَ مَرْيَمَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ They believed that it was Jesus, peace be upon him. But the Quran says it wasn't him. So what happened then? It must mean then, therefore, that someone else, Allah caused someone else to look like Jesus. And that is the person they captured and they nailed on the cross. Because they believed they had captured Jesus. And if the resemblance was far off, they would know that this isn't Jesus. Even if we assume in those days there weren't electricity. And so in the nighttime, in the darkness, in the dim light, they captured someone who may have looked like Jesus, but it wasn't. The next day, when it was daylight, they would have realized. They would see that the man on the cross is not Jesus at all. So it must mean that whoever they captured must have looked very much like Isa alayhi salam. That's why Allah says it was made to appear to them. So they did capture somebody. They did nail someone on the cross. But it wasn't the messenger of Allah alayhi salatu was salam. Now, they might ask us, well, who is that person? The correct answer is, we do not know. Some people claim it is Judas because supposedly he betrayed Isa alayhi salam by leading the, the Roman uh, uh, soldiers to him. But there is no evidence in the Quran or the Sunnah to support that it was this particular individual. So who is this person? We don't know. But the Quran says it, 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 it was made to appear to them like this, that they had captured Jesus when in reality they did not. And so the Christian will also ask, okay, if they captured somebody else who looked like Jesus, very much like Jesus, what happened to Jesus then? What happened to Isa alayhi salam? The Quran has the answer. Verse 158, Allah says, This is what happened. Rather, Allah raised him up to himself. Allah raised them up as he was, alive, full of life, a human being raised them up. Now here, the Christian will say, oh, what do you mean God raised them up? This is not possible. Scientifically, it's impossible. You just don't float into outer space like that. All right, you need spe specialized, specialized space suit and you need a special aircraft to even take you into outer space. So the argument is, this is not possible. But the verse 158, Allah answers this objection himself. Allah says, بَلْ رَفَعَهُ اللَّهُ إِلَيْهِ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَزِيزًا حَكِيمًا This is the ayah, verse 158. As you know, this is the short ayah. بَلْ رَفَعَهُ اللَّهُ إِلَيْهِ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَزِيزًا حَكِيمًا That's the ayah, 158. Short verse, but it lays to rest the dispute. Allah says, nay, Allah raised them up to himself, and Allah is Aziz, he is the all-powerful, Hakim, he is the wise, he knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. And so in the verse itself, Allah gives us the answer to the objection that raised the raising up of a human being of Isa alayhi salam, just like that, without any special equipment or body armor, the answer is Allah has power over all things. 
And the interesting thing, or interesting fact, brothers and sisters, is that as I mentioned, this should not be difficult to, to believe in because this is the messenger whose whole life is full of miracles. You see, if this was the only miracle in his life, maybe people would be skeptical. But subhanAllah, there are numerous miracles before this. As I said, beginning with his birth, beginning with the fact that he spoke in, as an infant to clear the name of his mother. And then after he was commissioned as a messenger of Allah, he performed many miracles. Curing the leper, curing uh, uh, people who were bl born blind, giving life to a dead person, subhanAllah. He could even tell people the, the kind of food that they, they're storing at home. He tells them, he, tell, he told his people, look, one of the signs that I'm a prophet of Allah is that I can tell you what is it you eat at home and what you're storing for later on. And I've come with signs, signs that I am indeed the messenger of Allah. Signs that prove the truth of what I've come with. So fear Allah and obey me. So subhanAllah, the raising up of Isa alayhi salam is just one in a series of miracles that, were, that, that happened before. And so people should not really find it difficult to believe in this miracle if they've already accepted the previous miracles. This is what is strange. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised him up to himself. And Allah says, وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَزِيزًا حَكِيمًا And indeed Allah is the, 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 the Almighty, the All-Powerful, the Wise. So he has power over all things and there is nothing that is impossible for him. And he is wise in what he does. And he knows what he's doing. And it's interesting that he would save his messenger alayhi salam in such a miraculous fashion. His, the beginning of his life on this planet was a miracle, his birth. And finally, at the end, when the people tried to kill him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him in the most miraculous fashion. This is the Quranic perspective, brothers and sisters, of the life of this messenger of Allah that all of us as Muslims need to know and understand and to have conviction on so that we don't waver and we're not in confusion and in doubts when a Christian person raises certain questions to us. At the very least, it, beho it behooves us as Muslims to know the Islamic perspective, to know what the Quran has to say about this. And this is what the Quran has to say about this issue. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us. May He open up our hearts and minds so that we can understand this wonderful message He has revealed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala imbue in our hearts love for all His prophets and messengers and reverence and respect. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also cause us to be among those who will be raised up on the day of judgment in the company of His prophets and messengers. The, the people whom we have heard about, we have read about, and we love, and we respect, and we believe in as articles of our faith. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we have never met them or seen them, but may Allah raise us all up in their company on the day of judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us from the straight path. May He inspire us with the yaqeen, with the certainty of what we believe in so that we're not confused about our belief or our religion. May He give us clarity and may He remove from our hearts and our minds any doubts or confusions that we may have. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الصادق الأمين وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد. Indeed, all praises belong to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, 
the creator, the sustainer, and the controller of all that happens in the universe. And we invoke his peace and blessings upon his noble messenger, the truthful, the trustworthy one, his family, his companions, and all those who follow them in righteousness until the end of time. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, I have some happy news. Uh, last week, I believe on Wednesday, we made dua for a brother who told us that his brother was going to surgery. And the brother told me today, just now, that his brother, mashallah, had the surgery and it went well and he's out of surgery and he's recovering well. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to bless the brother and protect him and to grant him a speedy recovery, inshallah. The other thing is, I know that for the past few weeks, perhaps almost for the entire month of January so far, and even sometime in December, we've been under a very cold spell. Uh, but according to the weather folks, tomorrow things should be a lot better. So as Allah says, in فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرًا إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرًا That with difficulties, there will be ease. And so that ease will come insha'Allah. And this is for us two brothers and sisters, it's, it's actually an opportunity that Allah gives to us, you know, these fluctuations in life that we face. These are chances for us to recognize and appreciate the bounties and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we, when we get the ease, we can appreciate the mercy of Allah uh, for giving us ease. And we can also appreciate the, the easy times that we have. So that when we're faced with hard times, we are patient or more patient and steadfast. Now what I would like to cover today for the past few sessions, we've been talking about the life of Isa alayhi salam. And we talked about the birth of his mother, Maryam alayhi salam. And the fact that with her birth and her upbringing, and even her own pregnancy with uh, Isa alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed the world that a woman is as capable as a man of serving him. And then there's the birth of Isa alayhi salam, this great messenger of Allah, whose birth is miraculous. And there are many events that unfolded in his life that are also miraculous. And then finally, when people plotted to kill him and to harm him, Allah the Exalted saved him in the miraculous man. Now the last issue here is that the Ahmadis, or the Qadianis as we know them, believe that Isa alayhi salam died. They believe that after Allah saved him, he died. And I heard, I don't know how true this is, that uh, they claim he was buried somewhere in Kashmir. So the question is, what does the Quran have to say? Or, if there is nothing specific in the Quran, what is the Islamic perspective, the correct perspective on whether Isa alayhi salam has died or is still alive? Now, the Ahmadis use two ayats in the Quran. One of them in Surah Al-Imran and the other in Surah Al-Ma'idah, towards the end. In Surah Al-Imran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِذْ قَالَ اللَّهُ يَا عِيسَى إِنِّي مُتَوَفِّيكَ وَرَافِعُكَ عِلَيْكَ And the, the problem or the issue is surrounding the word مُتَوَفِّيكَ As the ayah is in Surah Al Imran, Allah says, and remember when Allah says, يَا عِيسَى O عِيسَى إِنِّي مُتَوَفِّيكَ وَرَافِعُكَ إِلَيْكَ The word mutawaffi or tawaffa, mutawaffi comes from the verb tawaffa, which has two meanings in Arabic language. One of them is to die, or to cause to die. So if the word mutawaffi mean, comes from the verb that means to die or to cause to die, 
then the expression inni mutawaffika would mean surely I will cause you to die wa rafi'uka ilay Ibn Kathir rahimahullah in his tafsir mentions that some scholars say that in this statement there is what is known in, in Balagha in Arabic language as at taqdim wa ta'khir in Arabic language Sometimes in, 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 in using certain expressions, it is quite acceptable that a person may change around the order of events. So some scholars say that the ayah really means inni rafi'uka ilayya wa mutawafika, that I will raise you up to me. This is how he was saved, Isa alayhi salam. And after that, you will, I will cause you to die. <coughs> So that's one meaning of the word mutawaffi. The other meaning is to cause someone to fall asleep. So it can mean to cause to die or to fall asleep. And Allah has used the word in the Quran to mean to sleep. Allah says, Allahu alladhi yatawaffa al-anfusa hina mawtiha wallati lam tamut fi manamiha. Allah says he is the one who causes the souls to die and those that do not die in their sleep. That is, he causes them to fall into sleep. So the word tawaffa, the verb, has these two meanings. And of course, the, the Ahmadis, they take the one meaning which means to die. And so they use this as proof that Allah has said in the Quran that to Isa alayhi salam that he will cause him to die. <clears throat> so he has died. Ibn Kathir rahimahullah discussed this in his, in his uh, tafsir and he talked about the various opinions of the scholars and then he said but the view of the majority الأكثر, the view of the majority of scholars is that the word mutawaffi here in the ayah means cause you to sleep so when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised him up he was not wide awake Isa alayhi salam was not wide awake conscious of what's happening around him. Allah caused him to fall into a sleep. And in that state, Allah raised him up. And to, best of our, uh, to the best of our knowledge, based on the Quran and Sunnah, because there's nothing specific, Isa alayhi salam is probably in the same state of, of sleeping until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send him back down. Ibn Kathir rahimahullah argues, that Isa alayhi salam has not died because we know from the authentic sunnah that he will be returned to the earth. He was raised up from, a, from the midst of the people when they plotted to kill him and he was raised up alive so he did not die at that time. The Quran makes that clear. They haven't killed him, period. And how he escaped was that Allah removed him from the midst of the people. He raised him up. Bal rafa'ahu So we know that he was raised up. So he, was, he hasn't died. And we know that he will be com coming back because he hasn't died. And as a human being, he has to live the rest of his life and then he will die as every human being must die. In fact, every creation will perish. Nothing will stay forever. Allah says, Kulluman alayha fan wa yabqa wajhu rabbika dhul jalali wal ikram. Everything on it, meaning on the earth or in, in, the, in creation, will vanish. Fan. It will come to an end. It will come to an end. And the only thing that will remain forever and doesn't end, wa yabqa wajhu rabbika dhul jalali wal ikram. And the, to literally translate the face of your Lord and the Mufassirun say, that the use of one part of the body implies the whole being. So basically the ayah means, but your Lord shall remain. Dhul Jalali wal Ikram, the possessor of, of majesty and, and glory. So Isa alayhi salam will die, but he will only die after the coming back, after he is sent back, after his descent. In this, the Prophet ﷺ in the authentic hadith has mentioned as one of the signs, one of the major signs, that the hour is very near. The day of judgment is close. 
in the ahadith, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned 10 signs that are considered 10 major signs. And major here refers to the fact that they indicate that the hour is quite near. Because there are signs that are considered minor signs. Signs that indicate the hour is coming and somewhat near, but not imminently near. But these 10 signs are the signs that will mark and they will happen in a certain order. One will lead to the next and that will lead right into the, the establishment of the hour itself. The first sign would be the appearance of the Mahdi. <coughs> And the job or the mandate of the Mahdi is to prepare the Muslims to receive Isa alayhi salam and the leadership that he will bring. And then soon after the Mahdi appears, Dajjal will also appear. And the Dajjal will of course travel around the world and uh, create more confusion and doubts in, in the minds of people. And then the third sign is that Isa alayhi salam would descend. According to the hadith, he will descend in the Masjid al jami in, in Damascus, in Syria. And I know as we speak, uh, the country of Syria is in very bad shape. Uh, many masajid have already been destroyed. And not just the masjid, but even the infrastructure in the country in terms of roads and buildings and so on. But nevertheless, according to the hadith, Isa alayhi salam will descend at the same age that he was raised up from amongst the midst of people. And it would be at Salat al-Fajr time, just as the people are about to pray Fajr. And the angels, the Prophet says, will bring him down, like angels carrying him. And they will put him on the minaret of the masjid and he will walk down into the masjid. And when he comes into the, the, the jama'ah, the Mahdi will offer him to leave the salah. And he will refuse. He will say to them, this is a, an honor that Allah has given specifically to the ummah of Muhammad. That they are the leaders. He will not be the leader. He will pray behind the Mahdi. And after that, he will assume some leadership uh, of the Muslims based on the injunctions of the Quran. When Isa alayhi salam comes back, he's not coming back as a prophet and messenger with his own sharia, the Injil, no, or revelation, the Injil. He is coming back and he will have no choice but to follow. The final revelation, the Qur'an. Because the Qur'an abrogated everything else before it. So when he comes back, he has no choice now. But to follow the orders of the Qur'an. And his main mission, once he comes back, is to, is to follow the Dajjal. To go after Dajjal, because he is the one who has to slay the Dajjal. He has to kill Dajjal. And he would kill him, he would find him as the Dajjal, as he's trying to enter one of the doors into the city of Jerusalem. And Isa alayhi salam will find him there, will pursue him and find him there and, and kill him. And so that would put an end to the fitna of the Dajjal. And then Ya'juj and Ma'juj will appear. And they will of course create severe mischief in the land. And Isa alayhi salam will tell the, the Muslims, don't even, don't even try fighting them. There are too many to fight. But instead he will tell them to take refuge in the mountains. Similarly to what happened in Mecca, when Abraha came to destroy the Kaaba. Abdul Muttalib, the Prophet's grandfather, told the people of Mecca, leave their homes and take refuge in the mountains. And the Prophet alayhi salam said that Allah would send a flock of birds that would drop on the Ya'juj and Ma'juj, pebbles, just like they did on Abraha and his army. And that's how Ya'juj and Ma'juj will be destroyed. People will not find them. They will not have the capacity to fight such a large number of people. 
And then after that, Allah, the Prophet says, Allah will cause rain to fall to sort of wash away and cleanse the earth. And then vegetation will grow anew. And then there will be a period of affluence and wealth and peace in the world. Peace because the Prophet said in the hadith, when Isa alayhi salam comes back, one of the main uh, objectives of his coming back is that he will slaughter the pig and he will break the cross. The same cross that the Christians very uh, uh, venerate and they hold in high esteem. It's a symbol of, of sacredness. He will break the cross because he was never crucified on that cross, uh, as the Quran said. And in fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, وَإِن مِّنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ إِلَّا لَيُؤْمِنَنَّ بِهِ قَبْلَ مَوْتِ Allah says there is none among the people of the book. When Jesus comes back, alayhi salam, there is none amongst them except that they will believe in Jesus. They will believe in the truth about him. Now there is confusion and doubt. He was killed on the cross, he wasn't killed on the cross, he is the son of God, he is not God, he is, and so on. But when Jesus comes back, he will clear all these misconceptions, misconceptions and uh, uh, incorrect belief that people have. So Allah says that there is none from the people of the book because they have the doubts. As Muslims, we have no doubts that he is not the son of God. He is not God, he is not part God, he doesn't have divine qualities. We are not confused, the Muslims. We are sure that he wasn't killed, he wasn't nailed on the cross or anything like that. So we have no confusion about this, but it's they who have. And Allah says, there is none amongst them except that they will believe in the truth because now the man is here in person. I mean, the most one a person can do is to claim, hey, you are not Jesus, you're somebody else. You're an imposter claiming to be Isa. So this is why he has not died yet. Because he will come back. Allah has his plan for him. And so the word used in the ayah, mutawafika, and in the other ayah in Surah uh, Al-Ma'idah, towards the end, Isa alayhi salam says to Allah, وَكُنْتُ شَهِيدًا عَلَيْهِمْ مَا دُمْتُ فِيهِمْ I was a witness over them while I was alive with them. So before he was raised up, he was a witness over the people. He was a messenger of Allah and he uh, was witnessing what they were doing, good or bad. Then he said, فَلَمَّا تَوَفَّيْتَنِي كُنْتَ أَنْتَ الرَّقِيبَ عَلَيْهِ But when you, and the word, the word tawaffa is used here, when you cause me to sleep or when you cause me to die, right? These are the two meanings of the word. Ibn Kathir mentions in his tafsir here, that the Mufassirun say, فَلَمَّا تَوَفَّيْتَنِي means when you raise me up, cause me to fall asleep and raise me up, and took me away from them. كُنْتَ أَنْتَ الرَّقِيبَ عَلَيْهِمْ You were the one who was overseeing what they were doing. I have no knowledge of that now. So once Isa alayhi salam was raised up, he had no knowledge of what the people did after him. But he says to Allah, أَنْ كُنْتَ أَنْتَ الرَّقِيبَ عَلَيْهِمْ You were the one who was overseeing it. You are the Raqib, the one keeping a watch over them. So you know best, O oh Lord, what they were up to after you raised me. And so the correct opinion, based on the unanimous agreement of the, the scholars of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, is that Isa alayhi salam never died. He will die, yes. But so far he hasn't died. Allah caused him to fall asleep and then raise them up from the midst of people. And perhaps he's in that same state of sleeping until Allah will send it back down when Allah decides the time is right for that. And he has certain things he will do. And then he will die a natural death just like everyone else. This, as Ibn Kathir said, is the, is the correct opinion of the, the scholars or the people of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. And so the claim of the Ahmadi is that he died already because of these two words in the ayah. This claim uh, is, is, is incorrect. Although the word can have that meaning. Because remember, right, you might wonder, well, if the word can carry that meaning of dying, of, of death, why is their interpretation wrong? Well, the reason it's wrong 
is that we understand the Quran based on the understanding of the Prophet ﷺ and the Sahaba and the early Muslims. And the Prophet ﷺ, based on the ahadith, for example, the ahadith about the, the, the signs of the hour and the descent of Isa salam, the Prophet ﷺ understood that he never died. Salam. That is, Isa salam never died. And the Sahaba had the same understanding. So we understand the Quran based on the understanding of the Prophet ﷺ because it was his mission to explain to us the revelation sent to us. So that's how we can tell that th that interpretation, that tawaffa mihir means to die or to cause to die is not correct. Unless of course that was the understanding of the Prophet ﷺ. So I just wanted to clear, to clarify this position uh, so that this discussion on Isa alayhi uh, salam is quite clear in the minds of us. So, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us. Yes, brother. Yes, uh, did the Prophet say clearly that the Prophet Jesus did not die? Uh, the question is, did the Prophet say in a hadith, Jesus did not die? Mm -hmm. I have not come across any such hadith. I don't uh, claim to have read all the hadith. Uh, but to my knowledge, I have never come across any hadith in which he actually said, Jesus did not die. Yeah. I'm saying, perhaps there is no need to say Jesus did not die. Because in the other ahadith in which the Prophet ﷺ talked about the coming back of Isa, the, the understanding or the implication is he hasn't died. Or else, here is the issue. If he had died, then it would mean that for him to come back, he has to be resurrected, recreated. And as far as we know, once a person dies, there is no resurrection, there is no coming back until the judgment. Where we will be recreated and given life anew for the judgment, not for anything else. So if we assume he has died, then we also have to say, well, hey, you know what? He's going to be brought back alive and then sent back to the earth to do these things. Unless, of course, somebody feels that he died and he's not coming back. Then you have a problem with all these authentic ahadith that talk about his coming back. In fact, even Christians, brothers and sisters, even Christians believe that he's coming back. They believe he's coming back. And, but they believe that when he comes back, he's coming back as God. And of course, as Muslims, we believe he's coming back, but not as God, because he was never God. He was never part God. He was never even the Son of God. He's coming back as a human being. And of course, when he comes back, then the truth will become clear. Hopefully, the truth will become clear. You know, people still have the habit of, even when they look at the truth, to, to make excuses and to try to find ways and means of not accepting it. So who knows, when he actually comes back, there may still be people who claim, you're an imposter, you're not the real Jesus, you're somebody else. But nevertheless, when he comes back, as the Prophet ﷺ said, he will... He will slaughter the pigs and he will break the cross. So this sign of veneration in Christianity, I mean, this is probably the, the, the most eloquent way of letting people know, look, this cross has no meaning. He was never nailed on the cross. He was never crucified, never died. It has no meaning in Christianity. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. Yes? that crucified space, then how does somebody comes and what is the story? Okay, it seems like you missed some of the sessions. The Quran says in verse 157 of Surah An-Nisa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ They did not kill him, they did not crucify him. So the people at that time never apprehended Isa alayhi salam and nailed him to the cross. Allah says it wasn't Isa. Obviously, it was somebody else. Because the people did apprehend somebody. They did arrest somebody. On top of that, that somebody must have looked very much like Isa. Or else they would know they have apprehended the wrong man. So it must mean that that person looked very much like Isa. Or else they would know that they had gotten the wrong person. But they never realized that. They always thought that they had captured the right person, Isa. But the Quran says, وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَا لَهُ They did not kill him, they did not crucify him. شُبِّهَا لَهُ تَعُودْ لَمِينَ إِنَّهُ وَحَدْ تَانِي إِنَّهُ صَرَبَ دَانُهُ أَوْ لَلْقَاتِلِ إِنَّهُ شُبِّهَا لَهُ مَقْتِينَ 
شوف بها شوف بها شو أيوة لحديث بالصور والقط بعد ذلك Okay When Allah says it was made to appear to them What exactly was made to appear to them? It appeared to the people that they captured Jesus alayhi salam, the messenger of Allah and that that is the person they nailed on the cross and eventually he died. But Allah said it was made to appear to them like that. So they did believe that it was Isa on the cross. Allah says, وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ though. They never put him on the cross. So it had to be somebody else. And that somebody else must have looked just like him. Or else people would know this is not Jesus. We didn't kill him. But the, the people who, who supposedly killed him, they actually believe that they did kill him. Then Allah explains this. Allah says, look, they don't have sure knowledge. مَا لَهُمْ بِهِ مِنْ عِلْمٍ They're not sure about what happened. إِلَّا اتِّبَاعَ الظَّنِ they, they, don't, they don't have sure knowledge. All they do is they're, they're doing guesswork. اتِّبَاعَ الظَّنِ Assumptions. Then Allah says, وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ يَقِينًا And of a surety, they did not kill him. What happened? If they didn't kill him or capture him, Allah says, بَلْ رَفَعَهُ اللَّهُ إِلَيْهِ Rather, Allah raised him up to himself. And as we saw in the other ayah, he caused him to fall asleep and wait and raise them. Okay. So this is what happened. So I hope that, you know, this would uh, clarify for us as Muslims, the Quranic perspective on the life of this great and noble messenger of Allah, Isa alayhi salam. Excuse me. As I said at the beginning of this discussion uh, last week or the week before, at the very least, the Muslim should know with, with surety what is his or her position from the Islamic perspective on Isa alayhi salam. At the very least, I as a Muslim should not be doubtful or confused about what the Quran or what Islam has to say about Isa. I as a Muslim should be sure of this. And then, you know, we can deal with uh, other people's perspective on it. So that's why I decided to, uh, to talk about this issue in details, given the fact that also uh, a few weeks ago was, you know, the Christmas season in, in the world and uh, everybody was uh, about Christmas and about uh, supposedly celebrating the birth of Isa alayhi salam. And so I thought that it would be important for us as Muslims, at the very least, to know and to understand the truth from the Islamic perspective about Isa alayhi salam, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us. May He open up our hearts and minds so that we can understand this wonderful message He has revealed from mankind. And may He inspire us all to live by this message. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cause us to be among those who love and rever all His messengers and all His prophets. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise us all up on the Day of Judgment and the company of His noble prophets and messengers. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته